So good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Mitchell, and I'd like to welcome you to the ODI for the launch of a new report, uh, Hidden Victims of the Syria Crisis, Disabled, Injured and Older Refugees. And I'd also like to welcome our online participants. Uh, I hope you can see me. Um, I hope that uh, you can hear me clearly, and we'll look forward to hearing from you later when you'll have an opportunity to join in the discussions from the online chat room. Um, before we get to the report, I've just got to run through a few brief housekeeping points. And the first one is that this uh, event is not run according to Chatham House rules, and it will be on the record. Uh, secondly, if the fire alarm sounds, it won't be a drill, it will be a fire, so everyone <laughs> should make their way out through those doors around to the reception as quickly as possible. And copies of the new report are available on the table outside uh, in the stands in the reception area, so please do help yourselves. I believe uh, they should also be available later on, on your website to, to download. And also, could I ask you to uh, either turn off your mobile phones or, or put them on silent? That would be really helpful. Thank you. So l let me just begin with a bit of context. Um, and this report is, is part of a series of meetings that ALNAP is running on the international response to the Syria crisis. And last year we had uh, learning events at the DEC to discuss the challenges of conducting evaluations in Syria. And we also launched the DEC Syria Response Review here. And last month uh, in Addis Ababa at our annual meeting, we looked at the challenges of participation in Syria. And we were joined by the Syrian Ara and Arab Red Crescent Human Care Syria and Oxfam Jordan there. We've also, just to let you know, made a short film with Syrian refugees uh, now living, living in Lebanon. Uh, this film was asking how the, uh, uh, the displacement had affected um, uh, the, the people and what they actually thought themselves of the international response. And so the, the, the film that was made gave voice to their answers. And the reports, uh, the discussions, uh, and the film can all be viewed on the ALNAP website. And just to say also that all of this helps populate our Syria and Evaluation Learning Portal, which has been established to provide a, a library of relevant material on the response. And I believe there are now 330 resources on the site. And the aim there is to capture as much experience as we can from the response in order to help the system make improvements now and in the future. And so you can access the portal from our website. So that's a bit of background. But the report that we're launching today, of course, has been commissioned by HelpAge and Handicap International. And I think it's significant for at least two reasons. And the first one is that the research provides quantitative evidence on Syria refugees, Syrian refugees in Lebanon and Jordan, and on the numbers of older people and people with disabilities and the challenges that they face in accessing assistance. And this is important as this evidence has hitherto been missing in the Syria crisis and indeed, as many of you will know, is missing in humanitarian response in general. So we've got a quantitative report here, which I think is important. And the second reason, I think, is it, it provides a really compelling case that practical measures need to be taken in the way that humanitarian assistance is designed and is delivered to ensure that it meets the needs of all affected people. And this represents an, uh, an essential part of what it means to be impartial. And one more point of information is that the launch of this report comes at a timely uh, uh, moment, I believe, as tomorrow the International Development Commission will publish their inquiry report on disability and development. I think that's being launched in, in Parliament tomorrow. And I think that this really reflects a, a growing recognition, uh, including at the political level, that humanitarian assistance must reach the, the uh, most vulnerable and marginalised. And then within this, there needs to be a focus on disabled people, older people and injured people, all of whom we know have been neglected in the past. 
And so we're going to start with the content of report, which Lydia is going to present for us in a minute. The, we'll then turn to our three panellists, whom I'll introduce to you later. And after we have heard from them, then we'll move to a plenary discussion. And at this point, we'll also take questions from our online participants. And I are there nibbles afterwards, drinks, nibbles afterwards? Anyone know? There's a little nod coming up, so I think <laughs> there'll be refreshments <laughs> afterwards, so that's very good. I'm going to turn to Lyd Lydia first. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Lydia before we do. Uh, Lydia Di Leo, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, it's a good attempt at least. <laughs> 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 is uh, the Regional Inclusion <coughs> Program Manager with HelpAge International and Handicap International in the Syria Crisis Response. She specialises in public international law and has been working in the Middle East for the past five years, focusing on protection, rights, advocacy and research. Before that, she worked the International Criminal Tribunal for former Yugoslavia and the Kulyumani Support Group in South Africa. <coughs> so Lydia, please tell us what the report says. Thank you. Yeah. 